Good day and welcome to A Place Call Through, broadcasting live from WYTV7 Community Broadcasters Network. We're here today to share our story, our mission of hope. You know, we share our stories globally and it's done all through all those charitable donations. So we ask that you continue. And if you haven't given, today is your perfect opportunity to sow that seed into this ministry, a place called through at WYTV7.org so we can continue globally as we do, sharing stories from real people, going through real life situations and challenges. And so today with our story, we're honored to have with us as our guest, Patricia DuPont. She's here to talk to us about health and wellness. You know, we're all facing these challenges through this COVID situation globally again. And so that's why we ask you to sow those seeds because we want to continue sharing those missions of hope to encourage you, to inspire you, and also to empower you to help you live that healthier lifestyle. And we welcome today to A Place Called Through. I am your host and author, Patricia Wade Going. I am the author of Willpower, The Call to Rise Above. Again, I welcome to you A Place Called Through. Patricia DuPont, welcome. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. We thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to share with us today one of the topics that is really important as we're all facing COVID-19. You know, COVID-19 has been around for a while and it has presented many, many challenges for pretty much everybody. Um, you know, the change in the lifestyles, be it even in employment, finances, school, educational-wise, family-wise we're having to do things a little bit different. And, you know, uh, having worked in a food pantry for many, many years, even there, we're seeing the change in food. It is not so accessible to the people that have the greatest needs. So we want to talk to you today about how you've made this healthy lifestyle in the state that we are in this pandemic. Again, thank you. When I look at the pandemic and as I was preparing, I realized it was at that moment in March of last year that I had a decision to make. And that decision is what thrust me to not only to get the 50 pounds off, but it's given me an opportunity to share with many through the various mediums uh, my story and to give them a ray of hope. So when I, when I decided that here it is, life or death, Pat, is your choice. If you continue to eat the way you're doing and not exercise, if you continue to have your money funny, if you continue to be unforgiving, if you continue in that way, that it's gonna be detrimental to you. But if you make the choice to make the change, to use the pillars of, of spiritual and physical, mental, financial, as well as physical health, then your life will change. And when I got them in alignment, when I got them in alignment, my body, life situation, and a thrust for life, I love every day, but it started in the pandemic March of last year. Okay, and you know, and that pandemic, as we stated previously, it has affect all of us globally from one way to the other. But the one thing that you did, you made up in your mind. And, you know, even with the pandemic, it has affected, you know, hundreds of people emotionally, mentally. Mental illness is now on the rise. So what you think of yourself and how you think of yourself is vitally important to us. Um, not, e you know, even if we weren't in a pandemic, how you feel about yourself is important because that's going to take you to the very next level. As you have demonstrated with the loss of 50 pounds, because you made up in your mind that you had to do something regardless of the state of this pandemic. So that brings me back to us mentally. What really, you know, deep inside of you, something was stirring, something said to you, okay, yeah, this is serious business. Did you have any underlying health issues or family members that were going through something that kind of like said to you, okay, yeah, you really got to take a step here? Well, Ms. Goings, this is what happened. 
before the pandemic, the doctor told me that I was borderline chronic disease. And I did not take a step as I should have been, but being home alone during the pandemic with myself 24 seven, I realized and I recognized one or two things. The pandemic was either going to, with the Lord's help, I was gonna grow and go, or it was gonna be to my demise. Because loneliness is one of the factors for many people, uh, mental illness, no one to talk to, et cetera. And so it was in making that decision that no, I choose life. I choose, like I said in the intro, it's life and death that was set before me during the pandemic. And I chose life. So that means studying. It means making a better choice. It means to forgive. It means to do whatever I had to do differently that I may get a better and a different result. And, you know, and we commend you for making that, you know, decision and taking that next step. Um, you know, health and wellness is a challenge, you know, globally. Um, because, you know, people want to change their lifestyles. They want to change, particularly their eating lifestyles. And, you know, as I see that, you know, because I've been involved in, in a food pantry for many, many years, you know, when a lot of people come through, they really come through because they have a really great need for food. But then there are some that really, you know, they're not aware of how to make those healthier choices in the particular food pantry that, you know, I operated for past 20 something years, that was one of the things that we took pride in because we were nominated as a client choice pantry, which gave our clients that opportunity to come in and make healthier selections in terms of the food that they want. So, you know, financially, a lot of times people may want to change, but because of the rising cost of food, they are not often able to afford those healthier lifestyles. And, you know, particularly here in the South, people tend to model and eat the traditional Sunday, you know, after church meal, that fried chicken, that mac and cheese, that collard green and the cornbread, and they're all delicious and healthy in their own way. But we have to learn how to, you know, eat those things in moderation and also you know, we love the collard greens with all that fat meat in it. Yes, I do. Uh, you know, we have to learn how to do. So talk to us about some of how you prepared even meals, you know, even on a budget. How did that come into effect with you? Wonderful question. I have so many photos of the foods that I've prepared. And in all honesty, I had to change and in my changing, I was able eventually to go back in this regard. So I started out changing what I ate, meaning I ate less meat or no meat. There are many times that I would not have meat at all on my plate, but I needed to do that to get to a certain place or level. Now I take traditional foods and I'm able to scale or add more fresh vegetables in it and less of the fatty or no fat. I will use olive oil. I will use healthier oils because I know that it's gonna help the arteries. So with that said, and even with cornbread, I would take the flaxseed flax seed meal and incorporate it into my batter. Now it has more fiber. So God is just working with me to take what I'm, I know to have eaten all these years, and now to put a healthier twist to it. And so I'm very grateful to be able to do that. And just like you said, you know, we, I would say that we all kind of know different ways of preparing healthier, you know, styles. But again, it goes back to traditional, you know, if, if you grew up in a certain culture and this is what you ate at a particular time, you know, because in my family growing up in, you know, Philadelphia, Friday night was, you know, obviously fish night for us every Friday. That's what we had. We had fried bluefish at that, um, you know, and, and we enjoyed that. But then as, you know, we become adults, then we learn that, okay, you know, you can bake, you can do fish different ways. And so it, it, it's really a learning process for us all to learn how to not only make those changes 
in preparation, but it's also the adaptation of how to do this and what is necessary so that you can remain healthy. Again, I want to go back to the fact that, you know, a lot of people seeing them come through different pantries, affording certain items, because as we know, a lot of, you know, costs have increased. And so certain healthier foods, that cost is, you know, a little bit higher for most people. So how do you encourage somebody who wants to make that change to, you know, instead of cooking the collard greens with all the ham hocks or however they cook it, what would you suggest that they do in that case? And not that, you know, the ham hocks is the only way, but tell us about a way that you would suggest or that you have prepared the greens that work out for you. Okay, so before I get to the greens, before I even go to the store to buy them, I have to make choices. I have to decide, are you gonna do right and eat healthy so you can live? Or are you gonna to live to eat or eat to live? So I had to make that choice. Then I had to be committed because if I cheat, I'm only cheating myself. Then after okay. I made the commitment, then I knew that there's a growth process, meaning that when I get to the store, and even though I had a conversation with myself, what I was gonna do, I still had to be grown up enough to decide, no, I'm not gonna get the fat back or whatever but I am going to get the greens and I'm going to use the, the, you know, the olive oil or whatever oil. Um, the other thing is then I have to be resilient and to, and resolve. So with those factors, I had to decide them ahead of time because even now I just went to the store this morning, but I had to decide what I was going to get now because of fresh fruits perish quickly. I don't buy a lot at one time. Uh, I think the other day I bought two apples, but I could eat a half an apple, let's say with a breakfast or a half an, a half an hour apple that evening, um, even avocados or be a cabbage, you know, less is really more. I know my stomach has shrunk. I could, I could really eat back in the day, but it has shrunk because it was, it was, it started with my spirit and my mind and begin to see food differently. And, and eat differently. There are times that the Lord would have me to drink water. I love to drink warm water. Um, and so that will kind of like mentally and even physically kind of fill me up a little before eating. So there were ways through reading, through studying that I learned how to do differently. I, can't, I could not, because I tried it. My sister, it has been a 44 year walk to get 50 pounds off and keep it off. I've gotten it off and I got back on me. But when I decided through the pandemic that this is way I, where I'm going and I continue to learn and study and grow and with the help of the spirit, yes, it has been able to be maintained, but I had to make choices. I had to commit, I had to choose to grow and then I had to be res resilient, yes. And, and that's really important too, you know, that word commitment and your willingness, you know, to make this change. Well, we want to pause here for a commercial break and then we're going to come back with you, uh, Ms. DuPont, and finish talking about, you know, how significant this change has been for you. And, you know, give us some advice and some encouragement to our other listeners and viewers who may be where you are. So we ask that our listeners and our viewers and yourself, stay with us. We'll be right back after this commercial back to a place called through. Always been my mission to help people with their health. Organs are some of the most nutrient dense superfoods on the planet, and yet we're not getting them in our diet. My name is James Berry. I have been a chef for over 16 years. I came up with this new product. It's called Pluck. It's an organ-based all-purpose seasoning. And Pluck, you don't need to know how to cook. Just simply either make a food how you would and finish it with pluck. You can add it to the recipe while you're making it, you can finish it with pluck. You can simply just season your meal with pluck. By being a shelf stable spice can be added to any food, popcorn, rice, salad, chicken, fish, eggs, you name it and you can use it with pluck. The organ based all purpose seasoning that's versatile and goes with any food. Nutrition in a pinch. Hi, 
And welcome back to A Place Call Through. We're broadcasting from WYTV7, Community Broadcasters Network. We've been sharing our story today with Patricia DuPont, who's talking to us about health and wellness in the state of our pandemic, things that we can do, things that she has done. And as she said, it's been a 40-year journey for her just to maintain and lose 50 pounds. So we want her to continue and talk to you about this 40-year journey and how it has made the difference for her. Welcome back to A Place Call Through, Patricia DuPont. So as I was um, considering doing a commercial, um, I had to, I don't know if anybody listening, this has happened to you, but I was so busy giving and helping others, be it my children and my family, my parents, whoever, just giving, giving, giving that I wasn't taking care of me. And I don't know how many women totally, black women, I don't know how many women, that's your story, that you are a giver, oh, you give and you give and you give. But the pandemic when I was alone, I realized that the number one person that needed to be resuscitated or needed the oxygen in case of the, the airplane, um, I'm losing oxygen was me. And I love that analogy, I never forgot it, that if I give myself or put my oxygen mask on first, then I will be able to not only be sustained, but I'll be able to help somebody else put their mask on. And so for those of you who are givers, who just give it and you, you like, you just dried up because you've given so much over the years. Mm -hmm. I wanna encourage you, put the oxygen on you first which means make the choice to live healthy, make the choice to love yourself enough to say, no, 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 no. If I continue where I am, it's going to be detrimental, but I choose to do better. And, and that again is really significant to any lifestyle change that you, you have to choose yes. to be different. You have to choose to want to be different. And you have to also, you know, get that momentum going that, okay, this is really going to happen. I, and the thing that I like most is that you can do it. You yes. know, having had struggled with, you know, this off and on weight thing, I do understand, you know, I am this plane flying and I need the oxygen to survive. So I do have to do something to keep myself floating. You know, and one of the things when we talk about health and wellness and health issues is, you know, also, this pandemic has caused a lot of people, you know, who may already be diabetics, but there is an increase mm. in people now becoming diabetics because of the things that they have chose to eat. And again, I reference back to the pantry now, you know, of course, being client choice, we try to provide more vegetables and, you know, fruits, healthier things. But, you know, of course, we're all not going to just maintain just eating that because again, it goes that to, I need that Hershey bar, you know, and, I, and I, I'm guilty. I ate that bag of potato chips knowing I did not eat, I didn't need those potato chips, but I was just like, I need the salt, I wanted them. But then I realized after that, you know, there's things that you can substitute in place of that. So I'm still learning this. And this is the thing that, you know, I would encourage people as you had said before, you know, the reading and the studying, learn how to maintain yourself. And, you know, you've got to make yourself a priority, which you obviously, mm -hmm. you know, have done. Um, so we want to talk about, you know, again, go back to some of the recipes, because I've seen some of the things, you know, that you've done. And just like you said, eating half an apple where a person like me who's used to just eating that whole apple, again, it becomes the challenge. But it's what you do in that challenge that's going to make the difference for you. So let's talk a little bit more about, you know, some of the healthier um, recipes, you know, that you can share with us that has really walked you through this now found new self. Well, what I would like to share as it relate to the recipes, I go in the kitchen and I have fun. I have fun. I go and I shop and I, and, and I do have um that available. And I would, I would clean all the fruits and vegetables. And I remember taking photos of all that because when I'm hungry, I don't want to get something that I shouldn't be eating. I choose not to be bringing it home, but nevertheless, I want to have things ready 
so that when I'm hungry, I have food to eat. The other thing is I start traveling with my snack. If I know that I'm going to be out on meetings and, and I had my breakfast and I don't go out and eat a lot because I like how I cook. I don't know what all is being put in when I eat out. So I eat more at home. And so what I do is I bring a snack so that it can sustain me till I get home to eat. So, so I had to have a new way of thinking, a vision um, that, that would help me to keep on track and to do what I do, do best. Now, uh, just an example, let's say oatmeal. There was a time during the pandemic that I ate oatmeal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I would do oatmeal and a banana, okay? And I love cinnamon. But what I, what I found out through study is that the spices are very helpful. It's very, um, it is medicinal. It has health properties in it for our body, be it diabetic or, or whatever the, the case may be. And so that's what I would buy and focus on eating. But then for lunch, I may have oatmeal and a small piece of salmon and some um, um, sauteed spinach. And so, because when I was verge of chronic disease, they said I was borderline diabetic, but oatmeal is good for diabetics as opposed to rice. And so I learned by other people uh, mistakes or what they eating, and I incorporated it to be proactive instead of being reactive. So all of that helped me on my weight loss journey. And then she mentioned cinnamon. In fact, I, I love cinnamon and I do. In fact, I take a cinnamon capsule every single day and it does help maintain my blood sugar. What about exercise and fitness? Um, because I know that you do, have, you walk a lot. So, so let's talk about, you know, that side of not only just eating, but we have to do something in addition to that, um, you know, drinking plenty of fluids to stay flushed out. So talk about, you know, the fitness side. So other things that I do is exercise. I love dancing. And I remember being in a Zumba class prior to the pandemic, but I just do Zumba here. Zumba here. I love to walk and there may be a bridge um, close by that I may walk the bridge over and come back. Um, or I just do like a, a, a woman I saw on Steve Harvey. She just walked throughout our house to get her 10,000 steps. I guess what I'm saying the bottom line, we don't have to make an excuse. Just do it. That's what B.B. Wyman said. Just do it. If you just go ahead and do it, then once I complete the exercise um, for the day, it's a joy. It's, it's, it's revitalizing. Um, I feel good. And then the weight begin to come off. The, you know, things begin to shape up. And so uh, also stretch bands. It's good while you're looking at TV, you can just do stretch band, that resistant band. Those are also excellent. So you can just toucan goods, just juggling, that's good. You can just be creative and there is a way to get your exercising in every day. And yeah, you know, I, I learned this many, many years ago, you know, people think that, you, you know, I have to go to the gym. Uh, you know, and I learned this when my husband was ill, that the nurse always told us that you could just walk right in your house and get those 10,000 steps. So I pretty much get close to the 10,000. There are days where I do get to 10,000, but I've made up in my mind, again, the mindset that if I don't get the 10,000 every day, at least I'm going to shoot for five, which is far more than what I used to get. So I understand that process of that exercising and keeping it moving. You know, when we, I used to teach the fit to praise class, um, we did the arthritis class. You know, you do have to keep yourself moving. Um, that is really important as you're, you know, trying to move around, you know, you find yourself, you have more energy. Um, you're feeling more alive in yourself because as those pounds start shedding and those inches come off, that makes your mobility more greater. So yes, I would definitely encourage you to continue in walking and exercising as much as possible so that, you know, you are getting this health, you know, prepared, preparing yourself, you know, to live a healthier. And one important thing is that we're learning how to be safer in these healthier lifestyles. So it is very important that, you know, we not only maintain what we eat, 
how much of it we eat is also important. Um, you know, as I stated before, I love that bag of potato chips. It was not necessary to sit there and eat that whole bag of potato chips as I did do that night. Um, but now I'm not going to say I do that every single day, but I am learning also that I need to motivate myself more in terms of being more energetic and walking. And, you know, if you're, if you're privileged and you have a bike or a treadmill, these are things that, yes, we must continue to do, you know, not only just because we have them, but it is here to make ourselves, um, you know, healthier. So these are the things that we want to encourage our listeners and our viewers to do. Find healthier ways of cooking your food. Yes, we all enjoy that traditional food. And I'm not saying that that's not the best thing. Please don't take that as that. But there are healthier ways where we can use less oil, you know, because this oil and margarines and butters that we like, they're doing one thing. They are clogging up our arteries which take us into heart disease, hypertension. So we want to find healthier ways of enjoying our vegetables and, you know, the salads and the fruits and even the desserts that we eat. We have to find healthier ways to do that. So as, you know, Ms. DuPont has been sharing with us some of her recipes as, you know, eating oatmeal was one of her, you know, her favorite things that she did, but she learns through walking every day you know, with the hand exercises, you know, utilizing what you have to make yourself more healthier. And so, you know, in our conclusion, in our closing today on A Place Called Three, we want to encourage you to stay healthy, find a healthier path of life for yourself. Know that you do matter. Commit yourself to being more healthy. Commit yourself to knowing that you will make the difference, not only for yourself, but for your family. And in whatever work capacity you're in, you are helping somebody else. So live that example, be that example, make the difference. And I guarantee you, with all of us together, we will make that difference. And we're doing so here today on A Place Called Through. And before we close out, we've got a few minutes. Ms. DuPont, we want you to say something to our listeners and viewers to encourage them. Again, it's an honor to be here. And my, my closing word is put the mask on first. Give yourself some oxygen. Give yourself permission to love you. You are the most valuable person to everybody else in your circle. And so as you take care of you, then you and you've heard it here from Patricia Dupont. Take care of you. Put that mask on. Do the necessary steps to stay healthy. Again, I am your host, Patricia Wade Goings, the host of A Place Called Through, broadcasting from WYTV7 Community Broadcasters Network. I am the host of this show. I am the author of a book, Will Power, The Call to Rise Above, which is now available on Amazon and online at Barnes & Noble. I am your health and wellness coach. Also, and if you'd like to be my guest and share that wonderful testimony and that story, please, I encourage you to reach out to me, pgoingswp at gmail.com. You may also find me by phone number in area code of 843-608-9744. You can follow me on Facebook, A Place Called Through, at Willpower, The Call to Rise Above. And my website is available to you at www willpowerthecalltorizeabove.org. We ask that you stay tuned to us for our upcoming issues. Next month, we'll be celebrating breast cancer awareness and domestic violence. So we ask that you tune in, make that terrible donation to wytv7.org and help us continue with our mission of hope. We wanna thank our guest, Patricia DuPont, for sharing and encouraging and inspiring as we have done so on A Place Call Through. <laughs>